mental health and personal safety. Hello, my name is Amy S.P. Wilson and I am the CEO of Safety Positive Foundation. Today's video is talking about mental health and personal safety. On this week's Tea Time, it was all about mental health and personal safety. So I'm gonna give you, try to give you a recap of what we talked about in an hour in a short, uh, 10 minute ish YouTube video because we packed a lot of information in an hour um, discussion and it was great because we had we brought on a mental health professional his name's James Boulder he is a licensed therapist in the state of Pennsylvania and he is going to be um, coming on for a new tea time in August um, for those who are new to blindness and having um, want to talk about personal safety. So there'll be more information to come about that. But um, I thought it was great because I know I have my own mental health um, background in psychology, social work uh, degrees, but um, somebody who's um, got that extra uh, degree, you know, master's degree and, and things like that and works in the field. It was great to have their perspective. Um, not only does he have that, but he also has his own personal safety background um, in martial arts. So I was like, yeah. Um, anyways, I'll stop nerding out about my excitement of the, the tea time and get you into the nuts and bolts of what we really talked about. And so I really nerd out about mental health and personal safety myself because I think that it really does um, connect in a lot of different ways. And so I could probably spend hours and hours and hours talking about this. And so I'm just going to touch base on a few different highlights that I feel that, um, uh, that, that sort of touch points on what um, were the the, the best uh, that we, we talked about within that particular tea time. And so the number one thing when it comes to talking about mental health and personal safety is that grieving process. When you are diagnosed with your um, vision loss. Now, um, people don't generally think about this when it comes to um, being diagnosed, that your diagnosis has a effect, it's a cause and effect when it comes to your personal safety. When you are going through that diagnosis process that you are in denial, you have anger, um, there's... Um, uh, depression, all those things do play a role in how you are viewing your personal safety. If you're depressed about it, you're not thinking about wanting to leave the house. Um, you're more fearful. Your anxiety is higher. There's, there's all sorts of factors. If you're in the anger stage, you're going to be popping off and yelling at people if they're trying to, to, to help you. You know, there are people out there that do want to genuinely want to help. And sometimes they go about it the wrong way. A lot of times they go about it the wrong way if we're being perfectly honest. And so, um, you, you know, but if you're in that stage, you're going to be yelling at them probably. Um, and so, you, you know, if for somebody that's just trying to help you, all of a sudden you've become the aggressor and it becomes this weird mess, uh, quite honestly. And so, um, it's important to learn the, that grieving stage. Now, the point that, that, that James brought up was the fact that, um, he, um, was saying that this is not, uh, something that's a, a linear thing. It's, you know, you don't go through the stages, you know, in a, in a very specific order. Sometimes it can be, you know, you can go from, uh, anger to, uh, all the way back to bargaining about it, to depression. It, it can go completely out of order. Um, and so being aware of what those stages are. Um, and one of the things that we talked about is 
if you have a condition to where it um, is progressive as you get older, um, and I know this for myself, my vision has gotten worse. I went back through those stages each time my vision got worse. I went through the denial part and I got a little angry about it. Um, but each time you go through it, it, it can be a little bit faster. Um, for some people, not. Again, it's, it's, it's all individualized. But the more you're aware of those stages the better equipped you are to deal with it. And the more tools you equipped yourself, again, the better you are to be able to, to manage that. So it's important to, to understand that, that grieving process. There's tons and tons of information out there about the grieving process. It's probably more specific about death um, than it would be specifically with disabilities. But you can you can sort of transfer the the information out there. I I would be very interested if anybody does have uh, resources in specifically the grieving process with disabilities. Um, you can share that in the comments. But um, <clears throat> that's that's kind of what we're we're talking about. Um, and uh, again, you know, specifically with mental health and personal safety, um, I'd be very, very interested in that um, correlation combination um, with, with the, that, um, that information specifically itself. Now, one of the other information, the pieces that we talked about was, um, that, was that was brought up when we're when we're talking about the mental health and personal safety is that neglect can be a form of abuse and that if people are um you know friends family those that are around you are not um helping you um that they can see that you're um, in need but are not assisting you, neglect can be a form of abuse. I know myself um, and, and others have experienced that and that can be traumatic um, for, for quite a few of us. And to be able to, to work through that, um, it, it can definitely affect your mental health and it can definitely affect how you're viewing your personal safety. And so, again, being able to talk about it with others is, is a way to be able to heal and to be able to, to work through that. Um, you can do that with support groups, with talking to a friend, um, coming to tea times. Not that I'm biased. Of course, I'm biased. Um, <laughs> but... Um, there, uh, you know, of course, you can get therapists, psychologists, depending on your level of needs. But it's important to pay attention to your mental health because if you're not paying attention to it, um, then it can, uh, again, affect how you're handling your personal safety on multiple different levels. If you're not paying attention, if you're not working through some of that mental health things and um, you're not addressing it, then essentially you're not being proactive about your personal safety. And that's what we want for you to be here at Safety Positive Foundation. Um, it doesn't mean you got to unpack it all at once, but when you're working through some of your mental health um, struggles, um, because we all have them. I'll be the first to admit that I have my own um, mental health struggles. And uh, sometimes it's a definitely a day at a time. Sometimes it can be an hour at a time, minute at a time. But as long as we continuously work on them, um, or not continuous, because sometimes you, you do need to take a break. But um, the point is, is that um, you need to be self-aware enough to um, not ignore 
your issues don't bury your head in the sand um, because your issues, your struggles, they're not going to go away. Um, if you let you your um, life be ruled by fear and continue, or not continue, but if you um, decide to want to, you know, hide in the house, uh, again, you're not being proactive about your 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 personal safety and that's what we want you we want you to be proactive about your your personal safety work through those fears um and if it's something you struggle with we want to help guide you through that here at safety positive foundation so um traumatic events uh traumatic experiences uh happen to a lot of individuals who are blind and visually impaired. It doesn't happen to everybody, but it does happen to a lot of people. It can happen through abuse, neglect, um, and um, again, uh, the some of the ways to to work through it is by talking to people, um, and there are tons of different uh, coping strategies, uh, tools that you can do, joining groups, those sorts of things. I feel like I'm kind of um, repeating myself, so to say, but I cannot stress enough the importance of um, paying attention to your mental health. Um, as somebody who um, didn't want to pay attention to some of my mental health struggles in the past. I can tell you that burying them, shoving them down, um, it does have a way of creeping back up and um, that um, it's important to to pay attention to it. So, um, and if the people that you're around are not wanting to help you, um, that there are people out there that do want to help you. So, um, people here at Safety Positive definitely want to help you in that journey. Um, mental health is not our primary focus. Obviously, our focus is your personal safety, but we can point you in the direction of, of resources to help you with your mental health. So, um, uh, so if that hopefully gives you some encouragement in that, um, I'm, 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 ecstatic. So anywho, um, all right. So, uh, grieving stages, getting resources, taking steps to work through them, to being more proactive about your personal safety. Um, sharing with people definitely helps. Um, and then, uh, one of the other things that I think I would definitely be remiss um, as I'm kind of working through some of this is um, when it comes to mental health and personal safety is I'm a big component of having conversations with friends and family ahead of time about maybe some different um, concerns that you might have um, with people. So, um, with close friends or family of mine or people I've even worked with in the past, um, they know some of the issues that I, that I do have. And so I have, uh, co I believe in code words, safe words, whatever you want to call it. Um, I think that's, that's very helpful in communication. And um, we're all about having positive communication here at Safety Positive. And so my code word is Beetlejuice. Um, and I've been sharing this word with a lot of people over the last um, couple years. And so, um, but if I'm with um, friends um, and I'm at an event or something like that, and I go up to a close close friend, um, part somebody part of the the safety positive team, and I tell them I say, "Hey, Beetlejuice," they're gonna be like, "Okay, what's going on? Do we need to, you know, have a conversation?" But they know 
there's there's something going on that they need to be paying attention to all of a sudden. Like, it's not a, I need to have a two minute, uh, you know, I've said something in two seconds that could have potentially taken two minutes. And so it cuts down on communication. Um, it helps with my mental health because I've communicated that I'm, I'm having some issues potentially, um, that, that, you know, all of a sudden the person needs to be aware that, you know, they need to be paying attention to what's going on around me. Um, it, it, it's helped a lot. Um, and so you can have different code words. Um, me and my son have different code words. Uh, for him because he's had some different mental health issues in the past and so we have two different code words so one's for when things are really serious and then there's another one for when he just needs to talk and I don't need to be mom I just need to listen and where um, I don't need to be emotional about it I don't need to try to fix it I just need to listen to what he he, he needs to to say and so um, and I've heard of, um, the, uh, what I would consider the younger generation, uh, <laughs> having different, different code words, but, um, you, I have a friend that she has a code word that she can text somebody that they know that, you know, um, that person needs to call them and say, you know, hey, do I, you know, all right, uh, give them an excuse to get out of a particular situation or something like that. So these words can be helpful um, to uh, establish that um, my my safety, my mental health, my my whatever is um, there's something going on and I need some assistance, but it's a conversation that's already been had and they can they can potentially get you um, give you um, what's I'm, I'm struggling for the word here. I don't know why, but <laughs> they, they can give you that assist to to help you um, to get to the next part that you that you know to to get you to the next part you need to be in. So um, I encourage you that um, you know if you have people that you're you're close to um, uh, that that it's helpful to to have these conversations with. And sometimes um, I actually had a friend that. Um, she was uh, totally blind, and so we had a code word that um, sometimes she just wanted to know when people were being overly, um, I don't want to say weird, but... Um, because uh, we were like our own circus, you know, with me and my cane, she had her guide dog. And so um, we were on a, co you know, on our college campus and um, we were kind of our own little, own little circus, so to say. And so um, when people would be overly staring or something, um, I'd be like, we're going to the circus or something. And it was our own little, lo little code word, but she would know that, um, exactly what was going on and then afterwards I could you know explain uh the the situation to her again but it, it's it's a way to communicate kind of in a situation of what uh what was going on without having to explain um in a public setting to to her that uh this was the the particular situation she could understand um in in two words what what was going on without me having to give the full full breakdown because it happens so much that um that she you know we she definitely picked up on the energy because energy is is something that I feel like as blind people we definitely pick up on that 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 energy of people. Um, not every all blind people do, but it's it, it's a, a common thing. Um, but anyways, again, I could go on and on about this mental health stuff <laughs> if you can't tell. So I'm gonna wrap it up because um, again. I, 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 I get very excited about this, this particular topic. So if you have a topic when it comes to the mental health stuff, um, I would love to hear it in the comments. If you have a code word that is your favorite word, would love to, to hear it. If you have a, 
um, book resource again um, please feel free to to share it but um, I will definitely be making more uh, mental health and personal safety videos because it's it is absolutely one of my favorite uh, topics um, in the the personal safety space I have a lot of probably favorite topics but um, probably top top three anywho all right so um as always um stay safe out there and uh keep it safety positive and we will see you um next time here at the safety positive foundation channel and um in june we're doing uh consent and boundaries and i'm very much looking forward to that and so uh Keep it safety positive.